So I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm thrilled to be talking about joy. And even more, I'm thrilled to be collaborating with uh, Sam Aaron, who you'll see and talk with shortly, and uh, MetaX. And it should be a lot of fun. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to talk for like a small amount of time. And then Sam's going to come in, and he's going to talk for a small amount of time. And then, if everything's willing, we're going to have live coded music and dancing robots. But so much stuff could go wrong. There's like so many failure points. <laughs> but it'll be fun. We're all in this together, right? <laughs> so, um, so let's get started. So when I meet someone new, and uh, they ask me what I do, and I say I'm a software developer, and if they're not you know, in our community, they kind of look at me, and the question comes to their uh, tongues, and they say, do you like that? <laughs> Maybe followed by, isn't that boring? And I look them straight in the eyes, and I say, I love it, which kind of confuses them a little bit more. <laughs> and they usually follow up and say, like, why? So I usually follow this up with a question that I ask them. I ask them, have you ever had flying dreams? You know, like when you're little and like you float up in your dream, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I am flying. This is so frigging cool. Well, that's how I feel like I'm, when I'm in the zone coding. And they'll still look a little bit confused. So I'll ask them another question. Have you ever had one of those dreams where like you finally understand it all? I raise your hands. Did anybody have these dreams? And then you forget it, like, right when you wake up. <laughs> Has anybody ever, like, remembered it when they woke up? Because that would be really cool. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, that's how I feel when I finally solve a, pro a programming problem. It's awesome. And if they're still confused and they're still listening to me and they haven't run away, I tell them about when I was little. And like on a summer morning, I was eight, about eight years old, and I bicycled as fast as I could to my favorite playground, because in this playground near it, there was this grove of trees that was like magical to me. It was, it was just like a magical place full of wonder. And at that moment, I would look around in the trees, and I was utterly convinced that any moment I would see a unicorn. And that's the same wonder and awe I feel when I'm exploring a new technology. So all these things are why I love programming so much. And together, they're sort of the personal joy of programming. And uh, yeah, I love it. But it's fragile, right? You need to take care of it because it can be diminished. It can you know, seem like it might disappear. But luckily, there's some things that you can do that are common sense that we all know, but it's always good to go over them again to take care of your personal joy. So one of them, of course, is take care of yourself. Get enough sleep. I know, especially after this conference, I want to like stay up to 2 or 3 AM and you know, look at all the interesting papers and languages that have been presented. But after a few days of that, the rest of my joy <laughs> gets pretty diminished. Likewise, you know, take care of yourself, eat good food, exercise. <laughs> and of course, keep interested and keep learning. Keep that flame alive. And all of you are certainly doing this by attending this wonderful conference. Um, for me, um, my passion is Clojure. I love Clojure. And I remember when I was first playing with Clojure and also these Parrot AR drone quadcopters, which are fabulous. Um, and I was late night, one night after the kids were in bed, and I had the closure ruffle open, and I was trying to get the quadcopter and send it the UDP commands to actually take off. And I had it right next to me, and I pushed the ruffle command, and it took off, and I totally wasn't expecting it. And I screamed. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it worked. And at that moment, I was flying with the drone. It was great. So we've talked about things that can keep your joy strong that you have under your control. But sometimes stuff happens that's totally out of your control, right? I mean, life happens. Sickness happens. Illness happens. Loved ones pass away. And in fact, I lost a dear friend and colleague and mentor of mine this spring. 
and quite frankly, I was devastated. Joy just totally left the world. It was gray for me. Even the closure code and the programming that I loved just wasn't there. And I knew that this was part of the normal grieving process, but it was still really, really hard. And I remember one night I was sitting at the kitchen table again, trying to get interested in something, and I had the closure REPL open, and I was trying out this pro uh, program called, a library called Overtone, which enables you to uh, make music with code um, in closure. And I don't know music at all. I can't read music. I've never played an instrument in my life. Uh, but somehow, with code, I was able to make sounds and even music. And that point, it was like a ray of light, like the joy had finally filtered back into my life again. And I thought this was really fitting because it wasn't the joy, my joy, that reached me. It was a shared joy of the community that came to me in that dark time. Because um, Overtone is an open source, open source project created by Jeff Rose and Sam Aaron, and they took their joy and they shared it with the community, which was then shared with me. And in fact, the song that I finally managed to play, even though I have no musical talent at all, was a song from Daft Punk. <laughs> and that made me smile and cry, but that was okay. <laughs> and it was good. And I thought it was fitting also that the joy that I felt was from the community, because the person that I was grieving for during that time was Jim Wyrick, who passed away this spring. And uh, a lot of you may have known him. Uh, he is creator of Rake. He loved music. He was a wonderful speaker and teacher. And he spoke here at Strange Lip in 2012. So we miss you, Jim. He was always filled with joy. Uh, he was filled with personal joy, full of wonder and excitement for new things, whether it was Y Combinators or robots. And he took this joy and he shared his joy with the community through open source, through teaching, through speaking all over the world, and just inspiring other people. And he was a true caretaker of this shared joy in our community. He always, always treated others with kindness and respect. There were no stupid questions with him. He enjoyed talking with beginners as well as experts, and it didn't even matter to him if you were a programmer. I would remember at our office, I'd come back from lunch, and he was showing uh, the maintenance worker his drone that he was working on and you know, explaining the whole library. It just truly didn't matter. He was sharing his joy with everyone. So our shared joy is so important. Not only does it increase our personal joy, because sharing joy increases it, but it also binds us together as a community. This is why we are all here. And it lifts us up in times where we need help or we're you know, just in a dark place. But most importantly, it makes us more than ourselves. So I would like to say thank you. I'd like to say thank you for being part of the community that I love so much. And I urge you all to keep it strong with joy, love, respect, and kindness. And of course, music robots and unicorns. So I'm going to turn it over to Sam now. And um, I might be hooking up some robots while he's talking. Okay. Yeah? Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. What a beautiful talk. I don't know how to move on from there. I'm going to stand over here. Maybe that might make it a bit better. Hello, hello, I'm Sam Aaron. Here's my slides. Where are we? No, it's not even. There we are. OK, I need to stay over here. The range is there. So you might know me as one of the guys who created Overtone. Um, anyone here used Overtone? That's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's beautiful. And uh, when we talk about sharing our joy of programming, uh, a lot of my joy from programming comes exactly from hearing people using my software. And it's a really beautiful thing, and it inspires me to carry on. Um, and one of the ways I'm trying to encourage people to, to use the kinds of things I'm doing, like the, the, the main joy for me is, is, is promoting and communicating the, the creativity that you can have when you can code, the new things that we can do, not just 
coding is for apps and websites, which is something we hear all the time. And as professionals, that's probably where we get most of our sort of employment from. But as we know, coding is so much more than apps and websites, right? And so what could it be? It could be a, form of, a new form of interacting with music. So this is me and uh, Jonathan. We are Meta X. We were performing here at Strange Loop. This is a photo of us performing just a couple of nights ago. And you can see we've got the code behind us projected. Uh, we've got these crazy devices, which are data structures, sort of physical data structures. There are actually uh, these persistent data structures backing there. Every time we press a button, it creates a new event. That event receives an immutable list of all the other button presses you've had an entire session. And you can, in the function, you can actually say, well, what's happened before? And I'm going to do something new based on that. Some really cool stuff. Um, and what we're trying to do, though, is communicate the, 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 what, the newness, the exciting things you can do with coding that no one really understands. And, and that's not just to you guys. I mean, it is clearly to you guys, but it's to everybody else. Right? Because it's, I find it so frustrating when I try and talk to people about programming. And as Karen was saying, no one really understands. So here we are. We, we actually we perform in musical venues and festivals. And we're actually starting to, people go, I never realized coding could make music. Or I never realized that you could actually do interesting things with code. I thought it was really boring. Right? And this is the problem. Uh, but the other problem is, like, this is really complicated. Uh, and this is like the kind of setup we use, and I'm happy with this. I mean, this is this crazy Emacs Live thing, which I wrote, uh, with like GSL shaders in the background. It's really hard to read the text with this thing moving around. But it looks awesome, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> because it's about, <laughs> that's the whole deal, right? Um, and so, but if we try to share the joy of coding with more people, this is a way for them to be inspired, potentially, by what you could do, but it's not what they can do now. And that's a problem. If we want to get more people doing things, we need to make the path to get to somewhere like this, if that's where they want to go, as easy as possible. And so this is where the Raspberry Pi Foundation came in. They came along and said, we really like what you're doing, Sam, with this crazy music stuff. Is there any chance you could make something like this for the Raspberry Pi? I'm thinking, crikey, that's, that's going to be tough. So I, I ported Overtone, and it took seven minutes to boot. So it's like, that's not going to fly. Um, so I had to, rewrite, I had to rethink and rewrite something. So, and it had to also be something that was useful in a classroom. Um, so how do we uh, uh, provide an environment that can, can do something like this in this kind of environment? And that's tough, right? It's not just about, is it easy to use? It's also, can I get buy-in from teachers? You know? Do teachers think this is actually valuable to teach? Uh, well, no. And <laughs> But they'll get there. I'm, I'm sort of, I've got a Trojan horse. I'll show you in a second. It's really awesome, um, which will which get them to understand it. Um, and so also, th they have this, there's all these political issues about programming languages and what's an appropriate one and what's good for apps and websites and all this sort of nonsense. So we've got to deal with all these kind of issues. Um, yes, yeah, so this Raspberry Pi is a very small, cheap computer. It's like $35. It's a complete Linux box. Uh, you just plug in your television and some USB keyboard and mouse, and you've got a full computer. Um, and so that's amazing, but it's really, really low powered, so that uh, what you can do on it is very limited. Uh, so it keeps you honest as a programmer. And so I built this thing called Sonic Pi, which I'll demonstrate now. Oh, no, I won't demonstrate now in a moment. Uh, and I also created a scheme of work. So in the UK, it's really awesome. We have this new uh, uh, computing curriculum in schools, which is going to start now. So we're going to teach the whole way across from, from small children up to just before university computer science. And so that's causing a huge problem with the teachers, because a lot of the teachers, IT teachers, are skilled in teaching office skills, which is kind of useful, but it's clearly not really what, what we wanted to teach them. It's not programming. It's not understanding how the computer works. It's not understanding that they can make the computer do what they want with it. It's just using it as a tool for emails and spreadsheets and logo design. Um, and yeah, so I have a scheme of work. So this is a lesson plan for teaching computer science, introductory computer science, using this Sonic Pi system. And uh, uh, I'll get to what Sonic Pi is in a moment. But once I'd built that, once I'd used it, and, and it, was, it was fun, and people with teachers are using it, it was, it was an, enjoyable. The problem was, as a system for live coding music, it was absolutely terrible. It just made these beeps and bleeps. And you could, like, you could make the beeps separate with time, but the timing was broken. You know? so, and you could use threads. I taught threads uh, to get things like the bass line and the melody at the same time. But again, when you use threads, although you could hear them concurrently, they were totally out of sync. And on the Raspberry Pi, it was just utterly diabolical. But the kids didn't mind it. right? They were enjoying these beeps and sleeps. 
Um, but I was thinking, like, how do I... It's the thing which is fun for teachers to use and kids to play with, but it's not something that I'd want to use in a performance. I wouldn't go and use this thing. Um, so I started embarking on thinking about how we can expand Solid Pi. So one of the things we did is we got some money from the Arts Council. So the UK has this thing called the Arts Council, which uh, uh, is, has a massive pot of money and gives it out for artistic pursuits. So you apply for it. So we applied for it, and we, we got these artists, these some actual artists, to engage, to learn how to program. So they, they hadn't programmed. They're all like really top professional artists in the UK doing really amazing installations. So we convinced them to come, learn how to program, and then they were taking Sonic Pi, and I was coding, essentially, I forked it five ways, and then explored five different exp uh, approaches for them to do their art pieces. A couple of the examples, Rob Smith, he, um, he did a very nice project where he used the camera in the Raspberry Pi to take a photo, converted the photo into pixels, and the pixels into audio, and then played the audio out over the speakers, and then uh, wrote a little program to then turn it back into a picture. So you can see here on the right, we've got a very pixelated grayscale image of trees. Now, for us, that's not super exciting, maybe. But for everybody else in the world, it's really amazing. It's like magic. How do you turn a picture into sounds, and then the sounds back into a picture? Well, for us, it's about information and abstraction and data structures and representations. And it's all clearly obvious to us. But these are the things we miss when we try and communicate to other people, the importance of, of, of this and the value and the benefits of being able to see information as, as, as a conduit and, and new ways to communicate, new kinds of information. Um, another beautiful thing is Kate. She, she, she was really struggling for a long time. And she was, she, the most artistic thing she was doing with this Raspberry Pi, because she was so frustrated with it, was she realized it got really hot. And so she thought, what can I do with this? I can melt chocolate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she put it on a bar of chocolate, and she melted the, the chocolate. And that was like, this is, this is so, it was like a sign of frustration. But in the last minute, she came around, and, and she did this which was a live, you can't really see from this picture, but it's a live coded performance. So she was writing event handlers, uh, which were responding to her key presses, which then played sounds of key presses. So she was banging on this keyboard really hard, and the sound was coming back with more keyboard presses based on the events. And as she was coding, she was changing the sounds into new sounds. And this performance evolved into this really beautiful thing. And she'd never coded before, and here she was doing a live coded performance in front of a whole bunch of people as, as her artistic outcome. And, and that's, I thought that was a really beautiful thing. Um, and then we applied for a whole ton of money, uh, like 130,000 pounds. And uh, uh, we got it. And the, the, the deal was to take Sonic Pi, this beeps and sleeps, which I haven't shown you yet, because it was very embarrassing, um, uh, which is also installed on all the Raspberry Pis, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we thought, well, how do we take this and to make something that I'm happy with performing with that's actually going to be interesting from a musical perspective? And can we not just use it to teach computer science in schools? Can we use computing to teach music? Can programming languages be a bona fide musical instrument in schools? Uh, and so I created this thing called Sonic Pi, which I'll very quickly show you. Um, I also have a Mac version. Let's see if I can get out of this thing. Here we are. Uh, this is Sonic Pi. So it looks absolutely identical on the Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a very basic app. You can see I've got like a documentation system with a tutorial. Welcome, friends. Welcome, friends. Um, and yeah, you can, uh, you can like, do all sorts of cool stuff, like stretching samples and parameterization. And we've got envelopes, so like, you can attack things with decays and uh, phasing in and like, full ADSR envelope stuff. And this explains what's going on. Um, and uh, the simplest program you can write, uh, that's pretty cool, but let's get rid of that, uh, is like this. If I can make a sound. Can we hear that? No. Can you hear that? I can't hear it at all, so I trust I can hear it. Can we turn the sound up at all? Is that possible? Right, OK, right. So you can press play, 15. That's the first program. That's like the Hello World of Sonic Pi. And, and, and that you don't have to do any like, project creation or all that kind of nonsense or create a new class or instantiate something and constructors. And No, you just write the word play in a 50, and you can make it bigger if you want, and then you're done. If you want to make a melody, right, you write sleep for sort of 0.5 seconds and play an octave higher. Wicked, we're in. Um, and then this is what they do, right? So this is actually this is enough to do most of Western notation, these two commands. Like time is when to play the note, and pitch is how high, right? And so with these two things, you can go absolutely nuts. You can, and so they do actually. Kids will just write, play sleep, play sleep for hours. Um, but then you couldn't say, well, 
once you've got a play seat for hours, maybe you might want to use some structures. I can do some loops. So I sort of loop this guy. Uh, and they can start to understand the loops going around. It's like a circle. And you can actually hear that 62 is played at the same time as 50 because it's looped round. So if you want to make them separated, put another sleep in. There we are. Off they go. And then they certainly realize that they can actually change the synths. I won't do that now. I'll do it in a second. And they can also play samples. Like, this is a cool one. This is very quiet. I'm sorry. I don't know how to make it louder. Um, oh, thank you very much. Louder. That's good. We want louder. Right. So they, they can play that. And then they can also change the rate. So this is where we can explore different genres of music, right? So that's like drum and bass. There we are. Um, what about hip hop? Old school, early hip hop. Straight out of Compton style. And then we're going to do like Gabba or something. We just do 1.5. Right, we're off. And so they, they've got, what the hell? They're three numbers. And so you can talk about the importance of that. And then, because the other thing is, if you try and get kids engaged in games, and you say to them, right, we're going to make a game in Python, Pi game, whatever. And you say to them, and they go, ah, that's amazing. We can do that. We can make a game. You say, yes, we can make a game. I'm a programmer. I can show you how to do this. And then you say to them, so what kind of game do you want? And they say, right. I'm on a horse, and I'm on a hill, and I'm looking down at a castle, and I've got my army behind me, and we're going to storm it. Yeah? And I'm going to plan the strategies of the attack, uh, and I'm going to make sure... And you think, well, I can do you a circle. <laughs> That's your horse. And you think... And now, when I was a kid, that was amazing. Like, whoa! But today, with the Xbox, it's not going to happen. So what's the equivalent of... So if we're going to do this guy, we can like loop, uh, sample our men, uh, do, sleep for the sample uh, duration of loop our men. Let's make it back a normal rate. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll show you something in a second. End. Right, we've got a loop, right? That's really quite fun. What happens if we do minus one? Backwards. They go nuts for that. Right. Um, but then the cool thing is you can put some like randomization in here. So, like, so let's go either minus 1 or 1 or 0 0.5. And let's choose one of those guys. All right. We're already getting something that sounds a bit interesting. But we all know there's, like, there's two things missing. Um, the first one is that all music needs reverb. Like that's the first <laughs> lesson. So to get reverb, we just need to say with underscore effects, reverb, do. So we wrap whatever code we want with, with this stuff. Oh, I need to write correctly. So now we've got a reverb. And of course, we need some bass. So let's get this some sample uh, bass. So seven lines of code. Seven lines of code, right? So we haven't seen it yet. So how long have I got, Karen, to talk? Uh, maybe two more minutes. All right, so in the health system, there's some examples. So, uh, like, you can do Blue Monday by New Order. Here we go. So, like, Blue Monday is like the drums. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, right? And then a snare, and then some, some notes. Um. <laughs> so, the cool thing about this is playing on its own, right? Now you can be happy with that. But I can start modifying this stuff. Change a cut off to be 70. So next time round. That's quite nice. What about like 120? So next time it's going to crazy cut off value. And now we're going to modulate between the two notes twice as fast. Put some randomization in here. Uh. Oh, I, I need to actually put this as a lambda. By the way, it calls it once and use that value as a constant for that whole group. Right, enough of that. And another one, which is quite fun, is this uh, driving pulse. 
This is like the closest I've got to sort of Daft Punk like sound. And again, I can sort of change it. Now the cool thing about this, right, is that what I'm showing you here uh, is quite fun. I've taught all the constructs in here to 12-year-old children in six weeks. So there's nothing here that 12-year-olds can't do after six lessons of, of, of work. And we get some echo. Um, I could keep going for ages, and that's the nice thing. I'm on a train, right, going to London, and I just do that the whole journey. And you can do, you can do like sounds of the ocean. No, seriously, right? No, honestly, this is a beautiful thing that's available to you now. Like, you can, if you want to, on the train, just chill out and make some music. It's a beautiful thing, really, it's beautiful. Um, sorry for stopping you from laughing. Um, uh, ocean sounds. And then I'll just finish on this. The, uh, get some trombike sounds going on top of it. Trombikes in 60 lines of code. Right. Is that fun, right? Listen, you can download this now. Um, uh, I'll give you a URL if you email me. Um, I'll make a. I, I'm, I, may, I was going to make a website which I've made, but I haven't actually put it online yet. So. You'll, you'll be able to easily download it very soon if you want to play with this. Now, just, just to finish off, um, we gave a workshop. How long have I got, Karen? Two minutes, one minute, no time. Go. Slides, right? Workshop, me in the junction, which is like a Cambridge environment. We got 60 kids programming. We taught them how to program in a week. They did live coding battles. <laughs> so this is uh, actually jamming on stage. Well, battling and battling and battling and battling, and groups of them came to battle, and they had a lot of fun. It was joyful. Right? And these are the people who never realized that coding was a beautiful thing and they could make music with it. The whole bands were formed, right? So you've got these guys here piping their guitars into the laptop with this girl here who's modifying and changing in real time. Right? They hadn't done this before, a week before. Uh, more cool, this, this was amazing. This, this lad was just fantastic. And uh, we've got the live coding with the site pioneers. Get ready to hear some proper music. Boom. <laughs> Looping bushes and all that sort of stuff. It's also decided, uh, on all the Raspberry Pis, next to the Wolfram language in Mathematica, which is pretty cool, just there, Sonic Pi. Um, and the final point before I stop now is that um, we're not at all anywhere near complete in this journey, because when I gave the first lessons to the schools, one of the girls, well, the whole class gave me this beautiful card with lots of thank yous, and one of them was, thank you for making dull, lifeless computers interesting and almost reality. <laughs> right. I don't, know why, I don't know why you're clapping, right? I don't, I'd actually, I don't know why you're clapping, because this is depressing. <laughs> right, why is it people think that this is the starting point, right? Clearly for us, it's not dull and lifeless, but for other people, even after uh, lessons of music in schools, which is like crazy cool, they still think it's dull and lifeless. So it's really, this is our mission, your mission, my mission, is to change people's perspective of what computing is, to not make it dull and lifeless, and to make it badass. Um, and so, one of the approaches we're trying to do is, is we're going to try and demonstrate how badass programming is with this new thing we're going to do. Is that right? That's right. Are you ready? I think so. Oh, crikey. Right, OK. Well, I'm going to have to strip off, change gears. Um, oh, yeah. So I program a t-shirt. All right. OK. And we're going to get Jonathan on stage. Uh, this is Jonathan, the half of MetaRex. Is my mic on, too? OK, great. Right. It's Jonathan. Wait, wait. We have to unveil the surprise. I'm going to try and get this. The surprise. The, the thing. Are, Are we ready? ready for it? OK, so this, this is Craig. Craig and Dara. Where, where is he? I'm right here. There, there. Wait, wait, wait for it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> no expenses spared. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Woo! He made that. 
Awesome. OK, so uh, MetaX, they're an awesome, awesome live coding band. And the way, if you haven't heard them, they're playing at the City Museum the other night. So they do code, closure code, and uh, they generate music from the code. So the way it works is they're both jacked into the same REPL process, creating the sounds. And what they're going to do is ship me off messages. We're networked. They're going to ship me off messages of beat and amplitude. And then I have semi-choreographed moods, but I'm, but I'm still live, live REPL, giving them the combinations of the robots. So, so many points of failure, right? <laughs> so we have the Sphero. This is one of the robots. Communicates via Bluetooth, and if we're connected to it, we can get it to change color, which is totally cool. I have my helper, Devin, here, is going to catch robots if they roll off the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is a community effort. This really is. Um, so we also have a Roomba. <laughs> right? OK. Um, Let's see, I was connected before, but once I move him, he's also connected by Bluetooth. It's actually a Roo Tooth. Are you getting any messages, Karen? Uh, let me see, am I getting messages? I am getting messages. What are you getting? What are you getting? Beat four. What are now? Beat 15. Oh, yes. <laughs> what about 25? Beat 25. You've got to trust us. Good. Yeah, it's working. We're good. Right. No, it's okay. Good. Yep, we're in. So let me see if I uh, can control the Roomba, too. The Roomba. If he's controlled, we'll uh, play a note. You couldn't hear. He can like make music too, but way not as good as them. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then um, we also have this hexapod that is like ultra cool. Um, so if he is, he can go like. So yeah, he's way cool. Um, and we also have. Um, a drone, and usually I fly it like without a leash, but in the, in the space, it's going to be a leash, and it's anchored to a water bottle. Most of the time, it, it holds it if it, but we'll see. <laughs> so, <clears throat> try some spread some magic powder on it. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll keep him over here, right. in the we'll bring him over closer to the X when we get going. Okay. Right. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to get my actions going again. Hold on. I got to listen to your messages. So you Use guys are all set up. To me. Only one more thing. I got to. So there's an OSC handler that I'm listening to, and I am going to tell them to listen to the messages. Um, do you just want to do like an amplitude to send it to the yeah, sphere sure. to make sure he's, he's going? Five. It's hard to tell. It's kind of dark. I saw it, Brad. Did, did he, is he going? Mm. Do we have the disco ball going? Oh. We need to plug it in. Oh, we need to plug it in. We totally need to plug it in. It's not a real party until the bis disco ball's going. Yeah, yeah. And some of you like have finger things, like finger lights, because I had like these extra finger lights. Are totally feel free to use Three, it. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh, come. There we go. <laughs> Oh, look at that, yes. Woo! It's going crazy fast. <laughs> All right, well, let's, done. let's try to do something. <laughs> right, are you, so, okay, right, we're in. Jonathan, yeah. make some sounds. Yeah. There should be some sounds. Um, we got audio coming through. Uh-oh, do we have audio? I hear some sounds. It's coming, it's coming. Okay. Where's he going? I don't know. I'm going to try to make him roll. He's flashing, actually. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. I think he's going now. Watch out for my drone. Don't step on him. Go up there. <laughs> okay, so he's rolling and flashing with the beat there. Oh, that's amazing. Flashing in the amplitude, and he's going kind of crazy. 
I'm gonna stop him. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this part. <laughs> All right, I stopped them. Should I go again? Okay, I'm changing the color. Oh, I think green. we're ready. Yeah, we're ready. Let's keep okay, going. let's go. All right. What are we on next to? What's, what's right. What else? You've got this crazy ball. What's this thing? It looks like a vacuum cleaner. Oh, oh, I started him again. Okay. All right, so the Roomba is going to now respond to your beat. Oh, that's way too fast. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You can make him go forward and backward. You ready, Devin? I'm gonna make him go forward and backward. You ready? Oh, he's going that way. Again. Let's do the hexapod. He's got some crazy moves. We get him going. Let's see. Try to make him walk. Maybe. Let's move him over a little bit. We'll do hexapod crawling music. You got anything to go for hexapod crawling music? Okay, let's see if I can toggle this mode right here. Hold on, I gotta get him in the right mode. Okay, ready? Let's go. Oh, it's going kind of slow. Oh, that's not working out very well. It's okay. We'll go back to the other one. All right, should we get them all three going together I at the same so. time? I think so, yes, absolutely. Can you actually do that, though? I don't believe you can do that. I don't either. That's, that's, that's concurrency, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> concurrency. You can't do that. <laughs> Using what? closure, can't do that. All right. Don't believe it. Let's try and getting them all together at the same time. The Parrot AR drone. It's a quadcopter. Lie, lie, lie. And um, is it dangerous? Sometimes. <laughs> All right. I have it tethered. Are they sure? uh, it won't cut your fingers, but it will hurt. Okay. Believe me. Yes. Oh, move him out of the way, real Your quick. son over here. Okay. So let's just try to get him into the air. And we're going to try to get them hovering on the Roomba if we can. Ah! Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Totally good. Let's see if we can get him to dance, too. I can't tell what he's doing because I'm turned around. <laughs> Over there. You think we should try getting them all together at the same time? Whoa! One more time, and then we'll get them all going. We're gonna and then get it'll crazy. be like the grand finale. Is it gonna be free for all at that point? Yeah, yeah. We're off our leash. We're just gonna let it all go. We don't have to do the same things, the same sounds. We can do no. other sounds. You can do other sounds. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's great.